So a little while ago, I decided I was going to switch from my beloved DWM to BSPWM, mostly because I just wanted a change of scenery. And it was kind of nice to try something new. Now, I've used BSPWM several times in the past, but I'd never actually lived in it. Like, actually sat down and made it my daily driver, customized it to everything that I needed to actually do and how, to, how I needed to do it. I'd never actually done that. So I decided to go through and do it. And I've been in that process now for probably close to two weeks, maybe a little bit over two weeks. And I have some thoughts on the process. So let's start off with the positive things because there are many positive things to say about BSPWM. For the first thing, I really enjoy the fact that it does all of its key binding configuration in SXHKD. In every single window manager I've ever used, I've used SXHKD, despite the fact that it has a horrible name that I can't say. And the reason why is because it's just easier to configure key bindings inside something like that. The syntax for that configuration file is just super easy, and it's way better than the whole XK underscore whatever that DWM does, and Xmonad does, and, Q and Qtile does. It's just, it's better. And it's even better than the more simple syntax that i3 has i just enjoy it more so using sxhkd for all the key bindings without having to deal with any nonsense in the actual window manager configuration is very cool and i like it a lot i've also enjoyed being able to use polybar as my bar now i know that in dwm i could have done this and eventually i will go through and do that but i haven't done that so far and because i've been able to use polybar in bspwm I've been able to experiment with Polybar more than I have in quite a long time. It's been well over a year, maybe even longer, since I've used Polybar for any length of time. The prior time was when I was using i3 as my daily driver. So that has also been a very positive experience. In terms of daily usage, BSPWM has been just fine. I really haven't had any significant issues. There are some key bindings that I haven't changed that are stock that still kind of drive me nuts. So, for example, if we have two terminals open here, and let's just say I want to make the one on the right here smaller. I have to be focused on that one in order for the key binding to work. If I'm focused on this one over here, that key binding no longer works. I can make this one here smaller if that one is, is focused, but I cannot then go through and make it bigger with the opposite key binding. So super control H would make it smaller, but super control L does absolutely nothing. It's a very odd choice for a key binding and it's kind of bothered me. I haven't gone through and fixed it yet though, because I don't really know how I'd want to set it up. The point is, is that those two key bindings, Super Control H and L, work different depending on which or what client you have focused. And that's kind of, like I said, it's kind of super annoying. And changing the size of clients is something that I do, you know, every, all the all the time. Every time I restart my computer, I'm resizing stuff on my workspaces to where I need to be, and having to make sure I know where I'm focused all the time, instead of just having that key binding work in both clients, you know, the way you'd expect it to, has been a little weird. In terms of layouts and stuff like that, I haven't done a lot of messing around because this one here does just fine. I never have this many windows open, so if you can see them, the like this, I'll take the camera away. I never have this windows open, win this many windows open. This is usually the number of windows I have open. Now, one thing I find interesting is that let's just say I'm focused on the the main window here because they don't really do a like a master stack thing here. It's just kind of wherever you, you know you're focused. So if I'm actually focused on the left hand side here and I open up another terminal, it actually spawns there. And that's another thing that has kind of been weird for me. Now you gotta remember I've been using a dynamic tiling window manager now for well over a year. I've spent the entire time just falling in love with DWM, and DWM has one main layout. It has other layouts, but for the most part, nobody ever uses those things. Monocle every once in a while when you want full screen, but for the most part, you use master stack. That's what you do. And you always know in, there, in, in DWM where the next window is going to spawn. I mean, it does change determining on which 
uh, patches you have installed. So I have like always, uh, always below or something like that. Yeah. I can't remember which patch it is, but the the point is, is that the clients always spawn in the exact same place on DWM. In this, that's not always the case. So if I'm actually focused here and I hit open up another terminal, it's focused there. But if I go up here and hit enter, it's it spawns there. It's uh, it's taking some getting used to because I'm not used to Windows spawning willy nilly wherever they seem to want to spawn. And I'm mean, there is a there is a system here. You you know that it's always going to spawn next to it. And I mean I can just continue to spawn things here. And then it would this is just like in this little quadrant. This is the specific BSPWM format. Oh, it's Fibonacci or whatever it's called. So. That has taken some getting used to. Now, the one thing that I haven't done very much of, and there's a reason for that, is pre-selection. Pre-selection is basically BSPWM's way of allowing you to manually select where the window is going to spawn. So if we do this and I hit, you know, open up another window like that, that would determine that that window is going to spawn there. Same here. And then if, uh, let's just say here, and like that so that's pre-selection and it's fine right it's it's okay also sorry for the dog she normally doesn't bark but apparently today she's decided to bark during the video that's all right anyways the the point is is that i haven't used pre-selection almost at all and the reason for that is that it feels like a very weird system to me now you gotta remember i came from i3 and i3 has is a manual tiler just like bspwm is and the way i3 does manual tiling is that you're in horizontal mode or you're in vertical mode like either the the windows are always going to spawn horizontally or they're going to respond they're going to spawn vertically and you get to change between those things right there's not much else to it you're not going to change the size of the spawn you're not going to change where it's going to spawn you know in terms of where the windows are it's always just going to be either vertical or horizontal and that's very simple and it's very easy for me to get my head around pre-selection in bspwm is not so easy for me to figure out like it's i mean it's fairly easy but getting the, the key bindings like there's several key bindings by default that deal with pre-selection canceling pre-selection selecting what size the pre-selection is going to be determining where the pre-selection is all that stuff there's like several key bindings that you have to learn and at least so far i just haven't learned them or so i mean i like i had to look them up every time I wanted to use them and that hasn't been a great experience just because it adds added complexity onto a task that should be really super simple it's not a horrible thing or anything it's just that it's one of those things where I haven't really found a need to do that for one thing like I said before I only ever usually have three windows open on a workspace hardly ever do I have four? And usually that's when I'm scripting or something. And it's easy enough to just make sure I know where I'm focused and, hit, and opening up another terminal that way. And just knowing where that's going to be. As long as I know where it's going to spawn, I, I don't really need control of anything else beyond that. So pre-selection so far has been fairly useless for me. And probably that's the reason why I haven't gone through and in-depth learned those key bindings. Just because I haven't found a need to actually use that. And that's honestly the, the biggest thing I have taken away from my BSPWM experience so far. Is that pre-selection is kind of the key feature. You know, it's the feature that you are expecting to use in BSPWM. That's why you would use it. Because otherwise, it's just a good window manager, I guess. It's not anything special it doesn't there's nothing if, if you took out the pre-selection bits the only thing that bspwm stands out for is like sxhkd that's basically it and i don't know that that's enough and the 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 thing is is that there's enough annoyances here for me specifically not always knowing where the next client is going to spawn also the controlling the width of the clients using that weird key binding where it sometimes works sometimes it doesn't work so because of not using pre-selection and all that stuff it's kind of just made me miss dwm quite a lot and the reason why is because i'm so used to knowing exactly where the client's going to spawn 
Now, if you would ask me like a year and a half ago, before I switched D to DWM, if I would be happy to be forced to use a window manager, not forced to use a window, but, but would I be happy to use a window manager that forces me to have windows spawned in a certain order all the time? Like you have no control in DWM really where the window is going to spawn unless you repatch things like right. So the way DWM works is that the the clients always spawn in a certain place in a certain order, whether it's at the top of the stack or the bottom of the stack, whatever, depending on what patches you have installed. That's the way DWM works. And even when you have other layouts installed and you are using other layouts, the windows still spawn in a certain order. They are there's always a top of the stack and always the bottom of the stack. And before I started using DWM, I was an i3 guy and I swore by the ability to always control where I was going to spawn the next client. Like I always wanted to either be able to control if it was spawning vertically or horizontally. And I love that about i3. I still like that about i3. So if you'd asked me a year ago or so whether or not I would have been happy to use a, another manual tiler, I would have been said yes because I didn't I really enjoyed manual tilers. The problem is my time with DWM has kind of spoiled me. I like the fact that I always know exactly where the next client is going to spawn. Even if I don't have control over it, I like having that knowledge, right? And it turns out my experience with BSPW has kind of led me to realize that I'm not a big manual tiler guy anymore. Like I used to be, but not anymore. I prefer dynamic tiling window managers now. It was an odd realization because, like I said, I used to love manual tilers quite a lot. Now, it'll be interesting to see because I'm going to try i3 again with my old i3 config file. And I'm going to see if uh, this realization holds true because it's possible that I just don't care for the way BSPWM does manual tiling. If I, if I go back to i3 and realize I like that, maybe it was just BSPWM. Now, I, there, there was other, one other positive thing about BSPWM that I forgot to mention at the beginning, is that it allows you to have as many workspaces as you want, and that's awesome. <laughs> like, that's so good. Uh, I, have, I have 20 workspaces right now, 10 on each monitor, and that's really only two more than DWM gives you, right? That's just two more, because you get nine on each workspaces. On, on each monitor but I like the fact that not only do I get to have those extra two because more workspace is always better but also in BSPDM you because it uses SXHKD you can set up key bindings to go to specific workspaces no matter how many ever you work you, ha you have so I have key bindings for all, all 20 workspaces and that's awesome that is something you can do on DWM but it requires a patch that I have never been able to get to work. So uh, those are my beginning thoughts on BSPWM. Now the question is, am I going to stick with it? And I think I am for a little while longer, but it really wouldn't surprise me in the next week or so if I end up switching back to DWM or installing i3 or installing Qtile or something like that, going to a different window manager. It wouldn't surprise me because there are just a, a few little pieces of BSPWM that just kind of bug me. Now I'm going to try in the next few days to go through and try to fix those things. Like if I can change that key binding so I can change the width of the, the clients in the way that I expect to be able to do so, that'll get rid of one of the things that bother me. If I can go through and try to learn that pre-selection thing, maybe it will catch on in my brain. And if it can't, if, if I can get to the point where, you know, this, it feels natural, then BSPWM will be even better than I think it is right now. I doubt that that's going to happen. I doubt that it's going to click for me in that way, but we'll see. So that is it for this video. If you've used BSPWM and you really like it or you don't like it, leave those comments in the comment section below. I'd really love to hear from you. You can also send those comments to me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I would like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Today, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gentoos, Fun2, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Tool, Steve A, CyberGuy Linux, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Dated, Sean, Jeremy, Odin, Merrick, Camp, Josh Lee, J Dog, the BCs Rock, Peter, and Crucible. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.